Skidoobadoobop, Friend Shop. Hey, welcome back out to the Friend Shop and to the first episode of my Acrylic Academy for Prop and Costume Makers. Um, this episode, I'm gonna kind of go through a little bit of a lightning round on the basics of acrylic paint and how they apply to props and costumes, and then get into one of the most useful acrylic mediums that you can buy, a uh, fabric painting medium. But first, let's talk about what acrylic is. Acrylic, at its core, it's a, it's a glue. It's a, it's a plastic molecule. Um, acrylic polymer is the base of all acrylic paints, which means all acrylic paints play nicely with each other. From your cheap craft store paint all the way up to high-end professional lines from Golden or Liquitex. Now, acrylic also covers more than just paint. There is acrylic mediums, those you can use to modify and change the values and just the consistency of the paint, or you can even use them for fairing, gluing, and sealing. Um, one of the m most important things, though, to realize is that we are not painting paintings. We are painting things. So there's a few things that we're going to look for in acrylic paint. We do not want body. Body is the thickness of the paint. Since we are just trying to lay color down onto an object, we want our paints to be as thin as possible. The more body a paint has, the more you're going to see brush strokes, the more you're going to get buildup and gunk, and it's just, it's not something we want. Two, the kind of brushes we use. Again, since we do not want to see brush strokes, we want to use as soft as possible brushes. I really like cheap white Taclon or nylon brushes. You can get packs of these for, well, not na nothing, but pretty inexpensive. Instead of spending three or four dollars on a bag of brushes, maybe spend three or four dollars on one brush. You will be surprised at how much that helps your work. For larger applications or for other things, foam brushes. Uh, the cheap bristle brushes, those are great for weathering. Those are great for effects when you need it to be chunky. If you're just trying to lay down color, foam brush, white tacklon brush. Um, so, thin body, soft brush. If you learn nothing else, those are the two things you should take home. But let's start talking about acrylic mediums. Now, like I said, they are uh, additives that change the property of your acrylic paints. And the most useful and important medium that I've run across so far has been Golden's GAC 900. This is a fabric painting medium. This will take any acrylic paint from craft store, hard store, yeah, hard store? Hardware store. Y you can buy acrylic paint at hardware stores. There's certain brands that are that. Hey, that'll be a later video. Um, professional grade paints, anything in between, anything that is acrylic, you can use this and turn it into a fabric paint. So I'm gonna do a little demo of that and uh, kind of show you how useful that can be because the properties that you need for fabric, flexibility being the number one, also make it an excellent paint for EVA foam. So uh, without further ado, here is a, a little live demo of uh, the GAC 900. So for this demo, I'm going as simple as you can get, grabbing just a tube of the Liquitex Basic Acrylic and the Golden GAC 900. Now, I'm just going to squirt a pretty arbitrary amount of uh, paint down into this cup. Um, it's not an exact science. You kind of just have to get it down to the consistency that you need. So as you can see, you can just add a little bit in there. Even though the GAC 900 comes out white, um, it's actually transparent when it dries. So it's not going to affect the color 
of the finished piece. What it will do though is that it will make whatever color I use more transparent just because I'm adding more fluid which means that there will be less pigment to the overall volume of the paint. Um, that is something you got to kind of keep in mind when you're picking the paint that you're turning into a fabric paint. If your paint is already very transparent and then you go and add the GAC 900 to it, it's going to take quite a few layers if you're trying to cover something. But anyways, it's kind of just a eyeball it to the consistency that you want. Um, I like it pretty thin, so uh, I go through a couple of times of uh, mixing it. Now for this demo, I'm using a uh, small white Taclon brush. It's going to lay the paint down thin and not show any brush strokes. I'm also using three different sample pieces. One is a uh, strip of t-shirt material, basically. Uh, the other is just a piece of EVA foam, and third is a nylon zipper. Um, zippers are one of those things that's nearly impossible to find in the right color. So by being able to buy a white one and paint it the color that you need, it is, it is incredibly helpful. And you also get around all the problems that comes with trying to do a dye bath, uh, not getting the right shade, and just the mess that's involved with that. Um, the important thing to note as well is that this medium does contain formaldehyde. So if you were getting the idea that maybe you could thin it down and run it through an airbrush, absolutely you can do that. You also need to realize that you have to wear a respirator Otherwise, you're going to be breathing in aerosolized formaldehyde, which is really not good for you. Anyways, you can see now that on the darker surface, this paint is uh, a little transparent. So it's going to take quite a few more coats on the EVA foam to get the same level of color that I'm getting on the white t-shirt or the white zipper. But that just means you need a little bit of patience. It really is that easy to make paint that you can use to match your foam to your fabric to your zippers. Um, it does take a little bit of heat setting, so either throw it in your dryer or use a heat gun carefully. Like on the zippers, you don't want to melt the plastic. But as you can see, the zipper works fine. There's no problems with it. It didn't dry in the teeth or anything. Um, the fabric itself is still very flexible. It hasn't gotten crunchy or weird. And uh, it doesn't chip or flake off the foam nearly as bad as just painting raw acrylic directly onto it. So if this is the kind of stuff that you're into, if this has been helpful, uh, please subscribe to my channel. I've got a whole series of this coming out. Um, also, if you are going to be in the Seattle area for Emerald City Comic Con next week, I will be running a panel all about using acrylics in prop and costume making. It will be on... I'm going to cheat. Doo -doo -doo. Ba -ba -ba. Friday, 4 to 5 p.m. in room W310. So, come and hang out. Come and ask your questions. I'd love to see you guys. If you want to see more of my work or my wife's work, please subscribe. I already asked you to do that. But follow us on Facebook or on Twitter. Both of those are going to be at No One's Designs or Facebook.com slash No One's Designs. Um, or you can just go to our website, No One's Designs.com. Anyways, thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you here next time.